Greetings, Sunday School Scholars. It's time for Sunday School. Our lesson today is Jesus' birth predicted. We're on Lesson 1, December the 3rd, 2023. And our Bible basis is taken from the book of Luke, the first chapter, verses 26 through 30. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for the coming of your son, Jesus. Lord, we thank you that he came to identify with our pain and suffering. We ask that you open our eyes to see how great he is and the blessing that comes from just knowing him. We pray that you get all the worship and honor this holiday season. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Our memory verse, Luke 1 and verse 31. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. Our introduction, Zacharias and Elizabeth. In the time of Herod, king of Judah, there was a priest named Zacharias of the priestly division of Abijah. His wife, Elizabeth, was also a descendant of Aaron. Aaron was Moses' brother and the first high priest of Israel. So you see, we trace both of their lineage back to the priestly uh, lineage. They were upright in the sight of God, observing all the Lord's commandments and regulations blamelessly. But they had no children because Elizabeth was barren and they were senior citizens. My God, all hope is gone because they were senior citizens. Infertility can be a disappointing and for some, unbearable stress. It can be a disappointment. And for some, it can be an unbearable stress. In ancient Hebrew culture, barrenness was a disgrace, even a punishment. Barrenness carried a moral stigma for in Jewish thinking, for in Jewish thinking, it was not the fate of the righteous. So they felt like something was definitely wrong. Uh, perhaps your morals wasn't up to part when you were barren back in those days. Elizabeth called her barrenness her reproach. England. In Luke 1, 5 through 7, there was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias of the course of Abba, and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blameless. So we see that it was not a really a reproach unto Elizabeth that she was barren. However, uh, she took it as a reproach. And they had no child because that Elizabeth was barren. And they both were now well stricken in years. No doubt they had given up. And here again, we see Zacharias as the high priest during the time of Jesus' birth in AD 1. And we know that he's the father of John the Baptist. Aaron and Abijah on the list of priests. So here we see Aaron down here in the lineage of the priesthood. And Abijah is there. All right. So we know that Zacharias 
uh, came from the lineage of Abiah. On the word. In what many scholars believe to be the year 5 BC, Mary, a virgin betrothed to Joseph, was living in Nazareth, a city in Galilee. The angel Gabriel came to her with a message from God, announcing she would be mother of the long expected Messiah. Israel, the Jewish people, was still waiting for their Messiah that they had been promised by prophets of old. The long expected Messiah by the power of the Holy Spirit. The angel Gabriel came to Mary with a message from God announcing she would be the mother of the long expected Messiah by the power of the Holy Spirit. My God. Let's look at the aim that your students will learn that trusting God in impossible situations takes faith and humility. Lord, give us the faith and the humility we need to expect the impossible, to trust you for the impossible. In our first outline, Mary hears the message. From Luke, the first chapter, verses 26 through 38. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth. To a virgin, espoused to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. The story of Mary and Joseph begins in the region of Galilee. In the, tight, in the tiny town of Nazareth, where Jesus grew up. And I'll get my pointer here, my laser pointer. And we'll take a look on the map where we see here's Galilee. And here's that tiny town, Nazareth. All right. And this is where Jesus was. Well, he grew up there. And we, if we follow this little uh, illustration here, he... He, uh, Mary was from Nazareth, and we know that uh, she, they traveled to Bethlehem to pay their taxes in Jerusalem, and we know that he was born in Bethlehem. However, he had to leave there because Herod the king was killing all the babies, and he flew to Egypt. All right, let's get back to our lesson. The story of Mary and Joseph begins in the region of Galilee, in the tiny town of Nazareth, where Jesus grew up. In Elizabeth's sixth month, God sent Gabriel to Mary to announce she would miraculously bear a child who would be Israel's Messiah. My God, what an announcement. I know that Mary, I can't imagine how she felt when uh, this was announced to her. Let's develop our lesson. A look at the house of David. We see here that Joseph came from David, King David. And remember, the promise to Mary was that her son will be king, and it will be from the house of David. So we see Joseph being born down through the lines in the book of Matthew. It covers his um, lineage all the way back to David. And someone from the house of David had been prophesied would sit on the throne. And then here's Mary. Maybe I need my laser printer here again. Here's Mary, and we follow her lineage all the way up through Nathan, which is David's son. And again, back to David. And Luke brings this genealogy to us. So we see that both parties qualified for their son 
to sit on the throne in the house of David as king. Galilee of the Gentiles. Galilee bordered Gentile nations. And again, we can see that on the map as I pick up my laser printer here. We see Samaria. Then here is Galilee. And here's Nazareth. And we see Syria. And we know that all of these, the Capulus, were Gentile nations. And so... Galilee was considered Galilee of the Gentiles. The entire nation was under subjugation to the mighty Roman Empire. Roman was in control during this time. Nazareth was a despised city. Remember the disciples said, can anything good come out of Nazareth? <laughs> My God. Nazareth was a despised city considered inferior by the rest of Israel. The city and its citizens were disparaged at where be, and were belittled and the object of deep prejudice, both by Jews and Romans. And we know that we can identify with that. So here we see Nazareth being looked down on as inferior. And we can imagine how the people in Nazareth felt back in those days. Galilee of the Gentiles. What happened? The messenger Gabriel. Luke chapter 1 verse 28 and 29. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail thou that are highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. God sent a message to a virgin in Nazareth that looked down city to Mary. And he also sent Gabriel to a priest in Jerusalem, Zacharias. Mary was a young girl who had no sexual relationships, and that's important in our lesson. She was trothed to Joseph. Betrothal was like an engagement, but legally binding. And to break it off was considered divorce back in those days. According to the Jewish custom and tradition, only divorce or death could severe betrothal. All right, and that's true in our laws or in our supposed to be true among Christians today. You're to be married until death do you part, or however, Jesus gave grounds for divorce, and that was uh, infidelity or adultery and in death the unmarried girl would be a widow mary had already committed to mar to marry joseph but she had not had sexual relations with him not before marriage in the betrothal period sexual contact was considered adultery and resulted in my god stoning Woo! what if that was the law today mary is highly favored because she is the recipient of god's grace but mary was greatly troubled hallelujah by the words of the angel she was confused or greatly perplexed in contrast to zacharias and we'll look into this, who doubted the angel's words and required some sign before he could believe. Mary was perplexed but did not express doubt. That's the difference. 
between Zacharias and Mary. God reversed human expectations in Mary's situation for he was willing to use the lowest in the time to be the bearer of a king, someone from Nazareth, that despised little city, the little humble girl. Today, God continues to use, and let's look at this, this should rejoice many of us, the poor, the powerless, the helpless, and the weak. God looks for people that are in these categories to use them to make something beautiful out of their lives. God's strength is made perfect in weakness. 2 Corinthians 12 and 9. And this should be an encouragement to many of us that in our insufficiency, God is able to cause us to have strength and to use us to his glory. Luke chapter 1, verse 30 through 32, King James Version. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father, David. Luke 1, verse 33 and 34. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. I can rejoice with Mary. Hallelujah. Being promised a son that will rule over the house of David forever. The phrase house of David explains the child would be born in David's lineage or line. David was Israel's greatest king. Remember, God said that David was a man after his own heart. And God promised David that his kingdom would be everlasting, prophecy being fulfilled through Mary that his kingdom would be an everlasting kingdom. He's promised David that years ago. The everlasting kingdom of David is fulfilled in Jesus. We'll just take a quick look again at the house of David. We see that prophecy was being fulfilled through Mary. Hallelujah. That she would have a son and that he would be from the house of David, and that he would have an everlasting kingdom, and he would rule, how long? Forever. Praise the name of the Lord. We look forward to that day. Prophecy that was given to David being fulfilled in the New Testament with Mary and Joseph. Verse 34 and 35, the miraculous conception. Then said Mary unto the angel, how shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore, also, that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the son of god listen your pregnancy will not be by joseph it would not be by a human being hallelujah but the power of the highest the holy ghost is going to overshadow you does this make you wonder in awe the same holy spirit dwells in us today he is dwelling in us for a purpose to lead us and guide us into all truth, to manifest himself in us, giving gifts unto us. Oh, I thank God when I read about all the different things 
that the Holy Ghost does by manifesting himself in us and through us to exercise the fruit of his spirit through us. Glory to God. We thank God for the fruit of God's spirit. And we know the difference between human human flesh and the spirit of God. The fruit of the spirit is not like the flesh. The things that the flesh produce. Praise God for the work of his spirit. We thank God for manifesting himself through the power of the Holy Ghost in us. And it caused me to awe. Oh, it puts me in wonder. I often think about how he has filled me with his precious gift of the Holy Ghost and how he leads and guide and direct our path, order our footsteps. We thank God. Oh, my God. I love the song. And I love the music when they play. I won't take nothing for the Holy Ghost. He is our everything. This is his dispensation. With God, nothing shall be impossible. Luke 1, 36 through 38. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth. This is still Gabriel talking to Mary. She hath also conceived a son in her old age. My God, another Sarah. And this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. You can see that Mary did not doubt at all. She said, let it be so, be it unto me. Is there anything too hard for God, saints? And we know that the word of God gave us the answer. Nay, there is nothing too hard for God. The angel informed Mary of another seemingly impossible situation. Elizabeth's pregnancy in her old age. Yes, Gabriel told Mary about Elizabeth, a seemingly impossible situation. Elizabeth was in her sixth month of pregnancy already, again bearing testimony to the fact that nothing is impossible with God. This brings us to our second outline. Mary visits her cousin in Luke, the first chapter, verses 39 and 40. And Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste into a city of Judah and entered into the house of Zacharias and saluted Elizabeth. Mary was a servant of God and would follow the words of God. She wanted to obey God to a T. Mary responds, be it unto me, even as thou hast spoken. What a marvelous testimony to the magnificence of Mary. Her servanthood consisted of submission. She was submitted to fulfill and to do the will of God. Submission to God that characterized genuine believers in scripture and should characterize believers today. Saints, we should be submitted to the will of God, to the word of God. In everything we do in our life, we want to be submitted to the will and the word of God. Standing Elizabeth prophetic announcement. My, Mary was young and now pregnant. She knew no person in the world she could freely converse with about it but her cousin Elizabeth. And therefore, she hurried to her. It should be noted that Mary knew about Elizabeth's miraculous conception because the angel Gabriel told her. But Elizabeth did not know about Mary's conception. This provides an important context for understanding Elizabeth's prophetic pronouncement. My God, Elizabeth spoke prophetically. 
Mary and Elizabeth both had similar situations. God had acted upon both their bodies, performing a miracle for both. Mary in particular could be encouraged why Elizabeth was already six months pregnant. He had already brought it to pass for Elizabeth when Mary saw her. Visible evidence that God had already acted upon her miraculously. Praise God. Our very last outline, Mary visit Elizabeth. In Luke 1, 41 through 33, it reads, And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. My God, what an experience. And she spake out with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women. This is prophecy that she sang to Mary. And blessed is the fruit of thy womb. She had no way of knowing that Mary was with child. And whence is this to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me. Elizabeth, it was revealed to Elizabeth by the Holy Ghost that Mary was going to be the mother of her Lord. And whence is this to me? How can it be that you would come and visit me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? There shall be a performance, Luke 1, 44 through 45. Elizabeth was honored that the Lord, uh, the, the uh, mother of her Lord would come and pay her a visit. For lo, as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in my ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. And blessed is she that believed, for there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. My God, Elizabeth knew that only God could reveal such a thing to Mary, and that Mary believed God. My God, the baby leaped in Elizabeth's womb after hearing Mary's voice. Elizabeth also spoke a prophecy concerning Mary's belief in God. She proclaimed that there shall be a performance, hallelujah, of those things which were told her from the Lord. Mary teaches us that faith requires action even for the impossible. Believe God, hear his word, move forward in faith, and expect the great. God has said. Today, many people have babies without being married. We celebrate the birth of children with parents as though we are following the way of the Lord. How often do we stop to consider the guidelines God has set for us? Fornication is a sin. We should marry before having sex. This is God's way. Let us not conform to this world. Let us take a stand for righteousness sake. We are professing to be children of God, to be saved, saints of God. We are to live in a way that pleases God that your students will live in a way that, that's pleasing to God. This is, should be our aim. God has given us guidelines to follow, to give an accurate representation of him. Saints, we are ambassadors for Christ. And if we are professing salvation, we need to represent him. We need to live a life that is pleasing in his sight. Following his guidelines, we should be mindful to live in such a way that Jesus' light in us 
is more dominant in any circumstance. Will your excitement for what the Lord has done be seen by others in the way you live? Let's support our Sunday school, saints. We want to be sure to go to our cash app and put in dollar sign cash new life. And we're asking everyone to share at least $5 with our Sunday school. And I don't think that's asking too much at all. Support our Sunday school. Or you can do it in Givelify, which is New Life Community Kojic on Chambers Road. There's many New Life Community Churches of God in Christ. So make sure we have the one on Chambers Road in Delwood, Missouri. And be a blessing to our Sunday school. May God bless you and keep you and help us to live the life before others. Bye-bye.